today we will discuss sri aurobindo's concept of freedom you know friends that aurobindo who was born as aurobindo ghosh was an ardent philosopher and an advocate of freedom freedom was his catchword from his very boyhood you know his father krishnadhan ghosh was a westernizer who sent aurobindo along with his elder siblings to england to study there and ultimately to become a member of ics indian civil service aurobindo's father krishnadhan who was a westernizer he named aurobindo as aurobindo acroyed ghosh so aurobindo went to england as aurobindo acroyed ghosh and later aurobindo dropped the middle name acroyed to become really an indian so you know as you see that aurobindo wanted to free himself from this over anglicization spirit of his father he later came back to india and joined the extremist politics within congress and also uh, became an inspirational source for the uh, national revolutionaries uh, of bengal and uh, he was an ardent philosopher of national freedom and as well as he was also wanted that individual should emancipate from the bondage the bondage of the world and uh, uh, while in in the west while in england he learned about the western concept of freedom and he also when he came back to india he knew about he learned about and he realized the uh, indian concept of freedom what is the meaning of it according to aurobindo the indian concept of freedom that highlights the importance of the freedom of the inner self while in the west during from the days of renaissance enlightenment modernization and everything the west had only aspired mainly aspired for external freedom freedom for achievement of various material or bodily comforts the west ran for but the indians the ancient india it uh, always strove for the inner freedom or the freedom of the self aurobindo sought to mix these two kinds of freedom he knew that for our development for the development of the society for the development of individual we need a mixing of these two kinds of freedom that is the internal kind or the spiritual kind and the external kind that is the material kind and you know aurobindo wanted to reconstruct the society for betterment of the individual for the betterment of uh, the society but at the same time he wanted to preserve the culture so without without sacrificing one's own culture especially indian culture aurobindo prescribed a path of development towards the goal of freedom aurobindo as uh, we have just uh, indicated aurobindo tried to distinguish between the indian kind of freedom ancient indian kind of freedom and the western kind of freedom and i quote from him we move from aurobindo writes from a state of bondage to an original liberty this is what our own religion teaches that is what our own philosophy suggests as the goal towards which we move is mukti or moksha so indian philosophy moves towards mukti or moksha or emancipation emancipation is higher than the western concept of freedom western concept of freedom mainly relies on the material aspects of freedom but aurobindo knew that this kind of freedom the external freedom is also necessary for the fullest development of any mortal being and uh, so he also added that we have been moving on parallel lines towards the same end 
they have found out, they means the West, uh, they have found, found out the way to external freedom. We have found out the way to internal freedom. We meet and give to each other what we have gained. We have learned from them to aspire after external as they will learn from us to aspire after internal freedom. Aurobindo's central philosophy is, you know, transcendental, it is evolutionary, and it is teleological. And uh, li likewise, Aurobindo's concept of freedom also moved in that fashion. And according to Aurobindo, the human consciousness also moves from one stage to another and again to another stage, that is upward, upwardly it moves. It moves from infrarational stage to rational stage and then to super rational stage. The consciousness, the human consciousness uh, of uh, infrarational stage was basically emotive, emotive stage. And although it had uh, reached, it had attained uh, something spiritual at that time. Uh, for example, in ancient Greece, the human civilization had achieved many spiritual realizations, many knowledge also it could gain. But, uh, and also in uh, Indian, ancient Indian civilization during the Upanishadic time, Indians, they achieved many spiritual height. They could uh, put forward philosophy of spiritual realization through Upanishadic texts. But at that time, at the uh, infrarational stage, humans, could not achieve the reason, I could not achieve the rational perspective. So uh, at that time, humans were mostly bound by their emotive factors. Uh, but during the rational stage, the rational stage begins uh, at the time of uh, Renaissance, after the time of Renaissance and uh, Enlightenment. At that time, uh, Aurobindo says, when not a class or a few, but the multitude has learned to think, to exercise its intelligence actively, it matters not at first how imperfectly. Upon their life, their needs, their rights, their duties, their aspirations as human beings. Unquote. So, risen to the rational time, the rational age, that gave this spiritual achievement a new rational look when a man is not driven by his emotional commitments only, emotional drives only, but he can look beyond it by the help of reason. Rational stage has three kinds of varieties. Rational freedom has three stages or three varieties. The first is the individualistic variety individualistic or liberal democratic variety. Then there is socialistic or communistic variety. Then there is anarchic variety. Individualistic variety, it developed in the West when uh, some individuals in the name of the collective, in the name of the collective, in the name of the community, ruled the world, although in democratic process, through democratic process. It allows uh, the people to exercise their so-called voting rights or democratic rights, but actually few individuals, they decide over others. And this system is extremely competitive or this system is overtly competitive or over -com competitive. Uh, and to replace this system of rational order of individualistic uh, democracy came the a, a new order called socialism. Socialism tried to accommodate new things what was missing in the individualistic stage that is the equality of opportunity. At the individual stage of rationalism every emphasis was laid on individual freedom but in the socialist stage it was seen that equal opportunities should be accommodated to all. Now there is a clash. The individualist philosophy, it does not give enough consideration 
of equal opportunity and socialistic order it does not give much importance to individual freedom so there is a dichotomy between individualistic democratic order and the socialistic or the communistic order aurobindo rejected both aurobindo rejected both the systems of extreme individualistic hedonistic uh, type of democracy and also he rejected the absolutely freedomless uh, type of communism or socialism or nazism or fascism and they rejected it as instances of totalitarianism which neglected individual freedom like anything aurobindo finally comes to the third stage of rational order of freedom that is the anarchic stage here it must be reminded that anarchy anarchism although anarchy and anarchism means violence blood bloody violence but aurobindo does not rather uh, propagate this kind of uh, anarchism according to him this kind of anarchism which is directly linked to bloody kind of activities that has no place in his philosophy rather he uh, uh, put forward a philosophy of anarchism like gandhi when distinction between internal freedom or the external freedom will be obliterated uh, according to him anarchism demands an internal change of the individual in society for the more the outer law is replaced by an inner law the nearer man will draw to his true and natural perfection this further revolution demands the growth of a higher form of freedom which only an anarchic order a rational anarchic order a philosophical anarchic order like gandhi gandhi also advocated philosophical anarchism you know so like that this uh, further revolution demands the growth of a higher form of freedom the solution lies in a spiritual and inner freedom that can alone create a perfect human order thus anarchy is not for bloody violence anarchy is for realizing the inner realizing of the inner and the uh, and the and the outer forms of freedom and uh, this only at this stage aurobindo argues that human beings can really uh, mix this type two kinds of freedom which aurobindo is uh, now uh, advocating uh, during his uh, you know uh, swadeshi period at that time he advocated strongly for swaraj that is individuals uh, india's individual freedom and autonomy but now he is advocating freedom for the world and he he knows that this final stage he had divided uh, the human consciousness uh, the stage of human consciousness in three parts infra rational rational and super rational during this anarchic stage when individual the society will move towards stage of realizing both the freedoms then ultimately gradually the world will move towards uh, the super rational stage and within the format of nation state this is not possible within the format of nation state one cannot blur this distinction between the internal and external kind of freedom and he uh, writes a political order is needed in which respect for individual liberty and free growth of the personal being to his perfection is harmonized with respect for the needs and efficiency solidarity natural growth and organic perfection of the corporate being and this kind of freedom cannot be achieved cannot be realized within the confines of a nation state within the boundaries of a nation state uh, we need the whole world for this the world state or the world union for this uh, and on a world level this order must take the form not of an inter interrelated systems of nation states so aurobindo is here arguing to go beyond the 
confines of the nation states earlier he argued that nation state is an important stepping stone towards uh, realizing the world world spirit but according to him now he is arguing that to realize the world spirit of freedom where there is no distinction between the internal or spiritual freedom and the external or the material freedom and these two kinds of uh, freedoms are mixed with one another seamlessly so this is not possible within the confines of the nation state we need now not a, a, a world of interrelated nation states but a world he is not speaking of a world state but of a world union so a new terminology comes of aurobindo he uses this term of world union which is much beyond the concept of a world state composed of various nation states so this world union will unite the world uh, in in a in a very cosmopolitan way so it will be a very cosmopolitan unity among different people of the world with a spirit of world union at this stage this world union will obliterate will blur the distinction between the material and the spiritual freedom and he writes further that only with the development of a new spirit of unity in diversity within the new political structure of a world union where each individual or each group is dedicated to the fulfillment of all this realization of freedom is possible only there and here perhaps he is in league with his famous contemporary uh, rabindranath tagore rabindranath tagore also a uh, call for a world union a, a, a union where the individual will meet the spirit of the world this is a cosmopolitan union aurobindo is also talking of that he is also prescribing that this is the only stage where individual freedom and the freedom of the collective all beings all human beings in the world can be mixed and can be combined seamlessly and uh, uh, the cl climax of this evolution according to aurobindo occurs with a movement from the rational to the spiritual age from the rational to the super rational age that is the spiritual age that is the last stage of development of the human world and i again quote him it is this kingdom of god within aurobindo writes the result of the finding of god not in a distant heaven but within ourselves of which the state of society in an age of the truth spiritual age would be the result and the external figure so the state of society the state will be an external figure it will no longer be needed the state will lose its function and therefore its existence so the kingdom of god within ourselves so this resembles you know friends this kingdom of god phrase within oneself within you much earlier tolstoy leo tolstoy also wrote a piece called the kingdom of god within you this is a uh, gandhi what gandhi also took from tolstoy that we must realize god within ourselves we must realize individual freedom our internal freedom spiritual freedom and mix it with the collective uh, spirit of freedom of the world so world freedom the freedom of the humanity and the freedom of individual are linked in this way and uh, aurobindo uh, argues this in life divine in his magnum opus that the uh, it is here that the central problem of thought the task of achieving the utmost possible harmony of individual freedom and social unity can be achieved so this is at this stage this task of realizing individual freedom and also achieving social uh, unity can be realized and i conclude 
by Aurobindo's arguments, he wrote about, Aurobindo wrote about the reconciliation of individual freedom with social unity. And he writes, and I quote, A perfected community can exist only by perfection of its individuals. And perfection can come only by the discovery by all of their spiritual unity and resultant life unity. So perfection can become only by this way, by mixing, by combining individual freedom and social unity. So there is no distinction, no debate, no clash, no conflict between individual freedom and collective uplift. Aurobindo, like all the great figures of his time, like Vivekananda, like Tagore, like Gandhi, tried to combine in his concept of freedom the two kinds of freedoms, that is the individual freedom with the collective freedom or the collective uplift and social unity.